It was an emotional weekend in Toronto as the Maple Leafs celebrated Boya Salming and his return to Toronto, plus goaltending issues cropping up again in Toronto. We've got all that and more coming up on this episode of the Locked On NHL podcast. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On NHL podcast. Gil Martin, so glad you could join us today. And thank you for making Locked On NHL your first listen. We are free and available on all platforms. Big weekend in Toronto. And with us now, the host of Locked On Leafs, David Morasuti. David, uh, to me, maybe because I'm a little older, but the big story, uh, the emotional return of Borea Salming, who is uh, unfortunately dealing with ALS uh, or Lou Gehrig's disease. What was the emotion like in Toronto this weekend for Salming's return? Yeah, I, we didn't. I didn't know that Salming was going to be coming to Toronto until almost like the day before. We kind of heard that he was making the trip, and I guess that was kind of the plan, right? They didn't want to make a big public thing about it right away, and you know, it, it made a lot of sense. You know, you have three, you know, probably top Swedish players going into the Hockey Hall of Fame and the Sedin twins and Daniel Alfredson. So there's that reasoning to go. And then him being at the Leafs game. And I, it, that might have been one of the more emotional, you know, few days for this, like for this fan base in a really long time. I mean, maybe since like Johnny Bauer passed away, like that wasn't a very emotional time. But, like, it, it's hard to see somebody that's going through a battle like that. And I, I think what got most people mo a lot was seeing Daryl Sittler, his teammate. Um, you know, these guys went to war with each other on the ice, and he's trying to help Salming raise his arm up. And you just like, and, and Sittler has been, as soon as he found out that Salming was uh, diagnosed with ALS, you know, he was doing whatever he could to help his teammate. Like, this... They're, they they have a really special bond. So that it was just such an emotional weekend. It's a tough thing. A lot of the players, you know, at least have their fair share of Swedish players who all grew up idolizing Borja Salming, right? You know, he is to Swedish players kind of like, you know, now now this generation is like Sidney Crosby. Like these are these this is a player that a lot of these guys grew up idolizing because he was a trailblazer. He's the one that led the Swedish movement to the NHL, and you know he had he, he had some great moments in Toronto. Um, I think even his greatest impact was afterwards. You know, helping guys like uh, like Matt Sundin, kind of mentoring him to be the you know the next captain. You have you know even like the current guys, William Nylander, Rasmus Sandin, have all said they've. They got great memories with Boris Salming. So it was an emotional weekend for a lot of people in the organization and as well, also with the fan base. Yeah, I mean, Salming, one of the first two players to have a lengthy career in the NHL from Sweden when he came over in, in the early to mid-70s. And he he and Ing Hammerstrom, who was the other player who came along with him, they, they were challenged over and over again because – uh, there was that reputation that Swedish players weren't physical enough and weren't tough enough, and and they went after them pretty frequently. They did right, and it was not easy to be, you know, a, a, an outsider in the NHL, right? And they played a style that, let's be let's be frank, the you know that that NHL players at that time did not appreciate, right? They were they they were the East West type of uh, players and. At that point, the NHL is very much north south. They brought a different, no, they 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 helped revolutionize the NHL a little bit there. And yeah, guys were taking liberties with them. And he'd say, but though the Swedish players weren't exactly getting the benefit of the doubt from the referees, and you know, they weren't being looked out for, but it made them better players because of it, right? And and you appreciate the struggle because they didn't let it change who they were. 
they it made them better in a lot of ways. And that's always something you hear about with Borea Salmi. And it's why he is one of the greatest Leafs, you know, arguably the great greatest Leafs defenseman. There's arguments to say that he should be one of the greatest Leafs just because he might not have won in Toronto. And sometimes that's a criteria, but he was such a special player for that Leafs team because of how he played. There was no one really like him on that team. He he's, he's a name that's going to, his name is going to live with this, uh, with many generations to come. No doubt. And he always handled himself with a lot of class as well on and off the ice. Let's talk about the current Leafs a little bit. Goaltending now, definitely an issue. Injuries mounting for this team. How are the Leafs handling that? And what do you see as the short-term and long-term future for Toronto in goal? Yeah, short-term, I mean, Eric Schalgren has put a, a very valiant effort as the third-string goaltender. You know, now in the NHL, your third guy, a lot of things say it doesn't really matter who our third stringer is. Hate to say it, but now in today's NHL, you need to have you need to have at least three, four guys capable of playing in the NHL. And the Leafs are Leafs have done that the last years. They kind of been burned by it. This uh, Shogren was uh, definitely more equipped for it this year than he was last year. It's not perfect, you know. Like in the game against Pittsburgh, he led in a goal that, frankly, he said he should have had, and a lot of people kind of agreed with that. Those are things you're going to have to live and die by in a lot of ways with your third string goaltender. But long term, this is something the Leafs are definitely going to have to think about because Matt Murray has had injury issues that date back to his time with Pittsburgh. You know, he's he we many thought he was close to coming back for the weekend, but they ultimately decided he wasn't ready. So if he's ready, the concern becomes, can he stay healthy? And right now, you can't count on that. Samsonov, it was kind of a fluke play that led to the knee injury, but now that he has a knee injury, you have to wonder, is that something that's going to nag him the whole year? So there's going to be, I think there's going to be a real conversation here of whether the Leafs have to consider looking at options in net. And it's not something that the, the team wants to do because that's assets and that's, you know, they want to be able to focus on other parts of the roster and they don't want to have to worry about goaltending, but you know, both these players are with both these players sideline and unsure of when they're coming back. Kyle Dubas is going to have to have that uh, have that conversation at some point heading into the trade deadline a few months away from now. Any names that you've heard rumored or is it too soon to really speculate? Oh, it really all depends on how big they want to swing. I somebody brought up the name Thatcher Demko and I'm like, I mean, Vancouver trades Thatcher Demko. That's like admitting you're going full out like rebuild. I just don't see that happening. Like problem is the goaltending market is so volatile. Like there's not many, like no team is giving away a goaltender really. You know, I, I brought up on our podcast, James Reimer potentially as a, as a target because he's going to be a, a free agent. San Jose is not looking to win right now. And I don't think they're like what well, they don't benefit from holding on to James Reimer. You know, especially if they don't expect to compete this year. So that's a name I thought of just because also the salary isn't too outrageous. You likely will need San Jose would have to take a goaltender back in return potentially. Like, can they, will they consider taking Matt Murray as a deal? And like, can they make that work? Like, you, it, there's, there's too many variables, though, because the Leafs also don't have the luxury of having cap space to add a third goaltender that's making two plus million dollars. Not many teams really do, but the Leafs definitely don't. And the other thing that a lot of people are wondering about, Jake Muzzin's injury, he's out, but how long? Right. Right? If he's out for the rest of the season, that's about $5.6 million you can go out and spend. But if he comes back, that's $5.6 million you have to think about when he's coming back. So... It's not easy for the Leafs to say, okay, we can go out and get a goaltender because there's just too many variables right now to have to try to sort through. No question. <clears throat> David, why don't you tell our viewers and our listeners where they could find the podcast and where they could find you on social media? Yeah, you can go and find uh, the Locked On Leafs podcast where we get your podcast from on YouTube. And you can follow me at D underscore Morisuti. Uh, and we'll 
hopefully with we'll at least uh, goaltending uh, we'll get a clear picture going down going forward hope so david marsudi always a pleasure thanks so much for joining us today thank you gil this episode is brought to you by simply safe if you've thought about securing your home with home security but you've been putting it off you'll want to listen up Right now, Locked On NHL listeners can order the number one rated Simply Safe home security system for 50% off. This is their biggest offer of the year, and you don't want to miss it. Here's why I love it. In an emergency, 24 7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that a threat is real so you can get priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect fires, floods, and other threats to your home. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off your new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com/slash locked on NHL. This is their biggest discount of the year, so don't wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on NHL. There's no safe like Simply Safe.